Hi guys, how are you today? If you're new to my YouTube channel and watching this video, then let me introduce myself. My name is Gina Ahrens. I am a local to San Jose, California mixed media artist and watercolorist. Um, I've been doing mixed media art and watercoloring for a number of years now and been on YouTube since 2012. Actually, I'm about to hit my five year anniversary with that this June. Um, I do lots of travel art which is why you're all here. Um, I do lots of travel art and I go everywhere with this little brown case. This little brown case is my travel art case, my actual one, and if you were at the class at Direct Travel recently, then you saw this case live and in person. Um, it's a little vintage cosmetic case. It's about 14 by five by nine about nine inches. Um, it, because it's a vintage case um, and I do take it everywhere, I do have this belly band that I made to go on it with these two clips and this is actually the luggage tag that hangs on it. Not that I ever check it, but you know, it just looks cute. Um, and I have this on here because it sometimes does get really full by the end of the trip and I just want to make sure that the old vintage clips are not going to, you know, bust open and have everything spill everywhere. The size of this case is perfect for sitting uh, underneath your um, uh, seat uh, on the plane in front of you. You don't have to put it in the overhead bin. Um, and it fits everything that you need if you're going to travel with art supplies and creative things. I can even fit my Kindle in here and things like that. Um, and then I just take a little handbag or a small backpack for other personal items that I don't want to check. Um, I have traveled quite a bit with art supplies um, uh, within the U.S. and cruises and planes and I've never had a problem with anything in this case. Um, that being said, uh, as far as security is concerned, that being said, I do take out um, anything that I think might be an issue like scissors and check them um, if I'm bringing them. Um, so be aware of security requirements when you're packing your travel art case if you are. Um, I, I'm going to open it for you now. So this is the inside of the case. Now I don't always bring everything that's currently in here but I do sometimes. This is a little paper trimmer. It depends on what I'm working on. So if I'm working on the type of a journal where I'm documenting my year, this is the current one that I'm using for this year, where I'm really saving like plane tickets and um, um, postcards and like these are fortune cookie um, fortunes and you know if you're on a trip maybe the ship's photographer took your picture and you would want to put it in here. This is more about saving all those little bits and pieces of your travels and not actually doing too much art. So if you're doing this kind of art then you're going to want a little bit different supplies than if you're just doing art art. Um, my case is usually packed for both and yes I can get this in this suitcase when I'm traveling with it. I don't always bring the paper trimmer but I generally bring everything else that's in here. This is a travel water cup. This is not a must have, but if you have one, you can use, I've used the um, you know, plastic cup in the stateroom um, um, or hotel room and that works just fine. This, I just happen to have this, so. A little tiny pot of something called um, extra heavy gel medium. This is a golden. Um, this is, I use this as a glue when I want to glue down heavy objects into my, this journal, um, like smashed pennies and things like that. I have two of these little cases. They don't always come with me. Um, they're both for watercoloring. This is the generally the one that comes with me and the one that we've talked about in class if you're watching this video. I have to put that away. I forgot that was in there. Um, <laughs> this is my travel watercolor journal. So these two at minimum come with me. I can fit my iPad and Kindle and things in here if that's all I want to bring with me. If I want to work on this one too while I'm gone, then I bring these other two cases in this journal. Um, so while I'm gone, I always spend time in the mornings doing watercolors um, with my morning coffee uh, before we get out to go do anything, any tours or excursions or meeting up with friends or family. I do these little watercolors. And they're just sim quick, simple, quick, easy watercolors. Nothing super complicated. Um, and I always put a little bit of journaling on them. These are some that I did on the cruise. Uh, this one that I did on the cruise while we were on um, 
our cruise to Alaska. This is one I did while we were in Lake Tahoe kayaking. And I've taken this out with me on trails and at coffee shops and most of the time I work at it on it in the hotel room um, after we've done all of our fun stuff so that I'm not taking away from friends and family on the vacation at the same time I'm spending a little bit of alone time um, early in the morning or late at night before bed and just working on a little something creative and sometimes you know I'm working on this and the husband's across the table and he's working on something else um, you know it's there's nothing wrong with that so yeah, so this is, we're going to work on a little travel arting. Um, this is the case I bring. I never bring a ton of materials with me. We've talked about this in class. Um, this is probably more than the average person needs, but this is, um, um, the you know, the, you can get a lot done with what's in here. Um, a couple of black pens, um, one that's water soluble, one that's not, and I'll always have a white pen. I always have a, some kind of a straight edge and something with a point to scrape with. A couple of small little clips to hold my journal open while I'm working. A spray water bottle to get my paints, because we're talking about watercolor, so to get my paints re-wet. Um, this little needleless syringe is for filling up these water brushes. I carry these kind of brushes generally with me and this bottom part holds water and then you just screw on the top brush part. And these travel really well and I've taken them everywhere they don't leak. Um, some small short pens and pencils and a crayon to do different techniques with and do my basic sketches with. And this is one I just picked up. This is probably way too many. Um, inside here is my actual travel watercolors that I take with me. And then on the other side, which I'll show you in a minute, on the other side I have just a few bonus pieces. I have um, some paper toweling and wax paper that I always carry with me that helps protect the other paintings when you're working on a new one. Um, I have a little bit of plastic wrap, which we're gonna, I'm gonna show you what you can do with that today. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna work on the, with that in class or not, but I'm gonna show you what to do with that. A little bit of salt and an eraser in case I wanna erase some of my pencil lines. Now I probably bring more colors than the average person would bring, but this is a small 12 half pan watercolor tin. Um, it's a generic tin. Now I've taken the insert out that only holds 12 colors so that I could squeeze more colors in. And these are the colors that I generally carry with me. And I get a lot of paintings done with just these colors. They work great. There is a little small um, travel brush in here. Um, if I need a tiny, teeny, tiny little brush, where are we? There we are to do, you know, grass or eye um, eyelashes or something with if I'm doing a face. Let me get that wet. Some of the bristles are splayed. Okay. So we're going to put that it back in there. Then I just ensure that it stays shut with a rubber band. So to do travel watercoloring, you don't need much more than that. If you're going to take one of these other journals and you're going to do more of gluing in your tickets and pictures and things like that, then you're going to want something that's going to carry, um, you know, glue and tape and that sort of thing. Um, and just keep it in mind that, you know, don't bring so many supplies with you that you're spending more time doing art than enjoying your vacation because that's, you know, not what you should be doing. Um, This one, I could do live without this one. This one, because my watercolor kit, remember, has pens and uh, pencils in it. This one has a stapler, some glue, some tape, my reading glasses, which I need, and an extra little bottle of glue, um, regular like Elmer's glue. Now, I would recommend that you take any of these little bottles like that, this that you have, put them in a Ziploc bag, um, and then put it back in here, seal it shut, put it back in here, and then pack your kit in case you don't want things to explode um, because of pressure, like on an airplane. Now, the reason I don't take acrylic paints is because of things exploding. Ask me how I know that. You don't really want to know. It's not pretty. Um, so... So I take watercolor. Watercolor is easier and safer to travel with, and you have to put less things in Ziploc bags and not worry about them exploding. So that's what I bring with me. I'm going to repack this little suitcase. Now we're going to work on a couple of little samples. Um, we got some fun inspiration uh, photos from the people over at Paul Gauguin Cruises and Direct Travel. And I have an idea for 
um, an additional one of the photos that I wasn't sure what I was going to do with, but I just got an idea. So we're going to work on that, and I'll be right back. Okay, these are some of the fo inspiration photos they sent me to work with. Um, this one, I've already done a sam big, bigger sample painting of. We're going to do another little one so I can show you a different technique. We're going to talk about both of them in class. But here's the bigger one that you've, if you are watching this, you've already seen. Now, there is a speed through um, um, clip of video at the end of this where you see me working on this and see what I exactly what I'm talking about when I created this um, if you're not quite getting it. So um, stay to the end of the video and you'll you'll see that clip. They also sent me this one and this one. So I have an idea I had and I printed out extra photos and I so I have an idea of something that we're going to do. Um, we're going to do this one first, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you could do this photo. Um, when you're working on these, you know, we're not trying to copy um, every single detail about the inspiration scene or photo. Um, we're trying to just capture the feeling and essence of it. Um, you know, if you want an exact copy, that's, you know, that's why we have cameras. That's not why we, why we paint. At least that's not why I paint. I'm more of an expressive impressionist painter than I am a realist painter. Um, that being said, I do take a photo of, of everything like while I'm out on my tours. And then, like I said, usually in the mornings before I'm having my while I'm having my coffee before everybody else is awake, I'm sitting at the table or at the desk and I am going through the previous day's photos and picking one to make a little painting of in my journal. Um, it was really fun on the cruise because I got to, we had a stateroom with a balcony and I got to sit out on the balcony with my coffee and paint out there. That was really fun. So if you have a chance to book your cruise and you can get a room with a balcony, I would definitely recommend that. All right, so we're gonna work on this one. I'm gonna look on, work on a smaller pad of paper because this is the kind um, about the size that I actually take with me on vacation. It's not too big um, and it's easy to work on and get through and not be intimidated by doing a big giant one. So I'm going to move this up here. Hopefully we can get all that in camera. There we go. And we're going to just use a number two pencil. I'm going to go ahead and get my paints wet. I'm going to use a simple set of paints because probably the colors you guys have are, are limited and um, you shouldn't travel with a big giant set of paints. That being said, I'm a watercolor, so I have palettes like this, but I will tell you I never travel with them. Not, not often. Um, generally I have a small set like this one. This is a small pocket set by Van Gogh. And um, there's a number of different ones out there on the market. This is a nice one and I may actually bring this one to class so that you all can look at it. And we're going to get them wet, get it wet. I'm going to use this spray bottle of water. Okay. Now I've done a sample of my colors on a plain white piece of watercolor paper so that I know what they look like. So I do recommend um, if you're setting up a palette um, for personal, for home or travel use that you do this so you have an idea quickly of what the colors are going to look like. I'm going to get my brush wet. This is just a plain round brush. This is a Royal Watercolor Brush number 16 round. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a number two pencil and we're going to do our sketch. Now you could do this if you don't like the pencil lines to show when you're done and you're worried about that. You could instead of a number two pencil put in your case a water soluble pencil and then as you're painting the um, color from the pencil is going to dissolve into the paint. Um, I kind of like the sketchy line, so we're going to do that. So I'm just, if you look at the inspiration photo, these are just triangles and rectangles. And don't think of them so much as, you know, huts. So don't focus on all these little teeny tiny details. Just focus on the basic shapes. And really, we don't want to sketch the whole thing. We just want to get our huts in here. So I'm going to look at the photo, and I'm going to just eyeball it. But... You could lay your, if, you, if you're working from, say, you picked up a brochure at the um, concierge counter of a, um, 
an excursion that you went on and you there's a photo in there that you want to try to paint and add to your journal you could take that photo rub a bunch of number two pencil on the back of it lay it on top of your journal and then and then and then trace over the shapes and that will act like carbon paper um, but I encourage you to just you know try get try drawing it doesn't have to be exact remember we're just giving the impression of right My proportions aren't even always um, right, but I'm not worried about that because I really just want to get, like I said, the impression of that, that scene. And you can see that I'm doing lots of lots of little sketchy lines. I'm not, you know, and I'm not going to erase any of them. Okay, just, just like that. We're not going to do any more sketching than that. So see that? And it's not perfect, but it's good. It's going to give me the impression that I want. All right. So now I'm going to come in with my brush. And I actually, you need a rag or a napkin. And that's not something I generally carry with me because I just pick up napkins from the coffee shop um, and things like that. And I usually um, have a collection of them back in the stateroom or hotel room. <laughs> Um, that I've collected on the travel and I uh, use those. Um, I don't use the hotel towels, that would be a big no-no. Um, you could carry your own rag with you if you so choose, but using their um, coffee shop napkins is fine. All right, so first we're gonna start with the sky. And the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna just get this wet across the top here with just water. Then I'm going to take my ultramarine um, deep color, which is a more of a true blue and I'm going to add some water to it so that um, it's lighter that's the way you one of the ways to lighten watercolor paint is to add more water to it the less water the darker the pigments going to be and I'm going to just put it up here and you'll see how it immediately starts to go where the water is it starts to just blend down where the water is at that's what we want and you always want to start lighter and work your way darker with watercolor because you can't take it back. Um, you can, however, do that, put some water there and do this. And you'll be able to lift some of the color up. You may not get all of it, but you'll be able to lift some of it, especially if you do it right away. So now I'm just taking just water and I'm going to pull the little bit of color down around my little huts. I'm going to try to leave some white space or light space because um, there's some clouds in the sky here. So we are going to try to leave that light or white space um, and I'll show you a couple different ways. I'm actually not great at leaving white space. Um, I get carried away with the painting and then forget to do that. Um, but I'll show you some, tr I'll show you a trick. Okay, so I'm just going to pull some of that color down and then I'm going to take my napkin or rag and I'm going to go in while the paint is wet and I'm going to lift up some of that color and that's going to leave me some lighter lighter shapes in the sky. Now the sky, when you're painting skies, the sky is usually darker the farther away from the earth it is. In this picture it's um, it is a little bit darker but it's all pretty pretty much the same color. But this is just the first layer and you can you know interpret your painting however you wish. I'm going to add a little bit more color down here and I'm not going to get too far before I rinse my brush off and then get in here with just water. Okay, so you might want to pause here and work on your sky, but try to do it too quickly. 
Try to do it quickly and don't think about it too much. That's what I intended to say. <laughs> Remember, whatever you do, that you can go back in here with your brush, get some just plain water on there, and lift. Now some of your watercolors, depending on the paint brand that you got and the quality, will stain the paper immediately. You notice this isn't white. It is more of a light blue now. That's fine. You can always go back in here um, when you get home with some white paint, white acrylic paint, and put some white in there if you so choose. All right, so work on your sky a little bit. It should look about like that. Um, let it dry. You might want to pause here and then come right back. Okay, now we are going to add some light and shade um, to start adding light and shade to our painting. And as you'll notice from the inspiration photo to this inspiration painting, you don't, I don't stick to the natural colors that are in the photo, generally speaking. Um, you can, of course, but it's more fun not to. Um, the idea is to get the feeling of being in the tropics and who wouldn't want to be um, someplace like French Polynesia or somewhere else. Bali I know has these little huts out on the ocean um, and just thinking about um, the peaceful ocean scene and being out on the water and the sun and the warmth. Um, so one of the ways you convey warmth and sunlight and brightness in a painting is with using warm colors, yellow being one of them. So we're gonna start with Azo Yellow Medium, which is a warm yellow. And again, I'm gonna add some water to it so it's lighter, because you wanna do go start light and work your way darker. Try not to get your blue into it too much because you'll get green. Now, and speaking of that, if your sky is wet, you want to leave a little bit of paper space between where the yellow goes and the uh, blue is. Um, you probably don't want a lot of green in your sky. And the yellow will do that. It will convey and um, green. It will make your sky green. So I'm looking at the picture and I'm looking at where the sunlight is hitting the little huts and I am putting some yellow there. And I'm being very suggestive about my marks. I'm not, you know, sitting and painting every little line in. No, nope, I'm not doing that. I'm just going in now with some water, plain water. And I'm going to tilt my paper. I'm going to let that yellow run down to where that water is going to be. I may even do this and tap it. And we get some drips going. All right. We already have something that looks interesting. Okay, now we're gonna go in with some orange. Now, in a basic palette, you won't have orange, and that's okay. Um, you may have it in class, you may not. Um, we're gonna take our Azo Yellow Medium, and we're gonna take some of our Permanent Red Light, which is our, um, it's more of an orangey red. We have like a blue red and an orangey red in this palette. And we're gonna make orange. If you remember your lessons from kindergarten, yellow and red make orange, right? And that red is really strong, so that was a lot of red, so I'm just adding more yellow. There we go. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm again I'm gonna start out in this hut. Um, and you'll see how that orange is just bl um, blooming into the yellow paint and that's fine. I'm gonna sort of put it where the shadow, the darker, brighter spots are. And just like anything else, if you really quickly think, wow, that's a lot of orange, I didn't want that much orange there, get in there with your rag or your napkin. You won't probably get it all up, but that's okay. And you can make it drip some more. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to go back um, to this corner up here. I'm going to take out some of that orange that ended up there, and that actually should be blue. And we're going to put some of 
put some blue there. There we go. All right, now we're going to start to work on the ocean a little bit, and we're going to let all that kind of dry. Now, you can, if you're home or if you're in a place, maybe you're working in your hotel room or your stateroom, if you have a hair dryer with you and you don't want to wait for this to dry before you move on to doing some more painting, you can try using your hair dryer on a low, um, um, a, a hot setting but low blowing, you know, you know, so you're not blowing a lot of air at your painting, but it's hot if your hair dryer will do that. Um, at home, when I'm home in the craft room, I use my heat embossing tool. I'm not super great about waiting for things to dry. In fact, speaking of that, I think, well, no, we're gonna just let it go. We're gonna wing it, ha <laughs> ha. All right, so now I'm gonna start on the water and you'll notice the water, it, in some places, is much more turquoise green than the sky. You'll also notice, if you look at your inspiration photo, that there's little funky reflections of the huts and the huts pillar supports in the water up at the top at least. So that's, you know, if you have this yellow drip, it's going to create some of those illusions of some of those reflections in the water here like I did in this painting. All right, so we're gonna take our, I'm gonna actually clean, so we had some of the blue go into the yellow, so let's actually clean that up with a rag. Okay. So I'm going to take this other, this blue is called Cerulean Blue. Isn't that a pretty blue? And I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to add one of the greens to, a little bit of the green to it. This is Viridian Green. It's a blue green. And I'm going to just make this really pretty blue, which is already pretty, more turquoise. By adding a little bit of green to it. And look at this color that you get. All right, so now we're going to take this color, and you'll notice that this line here where the water is meeting the huts, that's a very pretty straight line, right? So we're going to take the tip of our brush, and try to replicate some of that line. We may not get it perfect. I think I made that hut too small, but that's okay. Then we're going to take our brush and we're going to put some water down here on the lower part of the line. And we're going to we're going to let it drip. All right, that was the husband. <laughs> Did you hear him in the background telling me he's going to Go take the car for a spin. He just did some repairs on it. So we're going to just let that drip. And this is how I did the big painting. And I just let it drip and I worked with the drips to create this texture-y suggestion of texture in the water. And you could just leave it at that and do this. This is great. And I love the look of this cerulean blue mixed with this viridian green. It's just fabulous. Don't worry too much right now if you get some of this blooming up here into your little huts. Um, you can, of course, take the edge of your uh, napkin and uh, your finger and try to blot some of that up if it's really bothering you. <coughs> I'm gonna take some more of our paint and I'm gonna <clears throat> go into some of the spots and just darken it up just a little bit, okay? Now, we're going to take some of our cerulean blue straight without anything mixed in it. And this, in this particular brand, is a very kind of bright, opaque color. So I'm definitely adding water to it, and I'm definitely um, I, I'm, I'm going to add just a little bit of it and. Um, at a time and not put try not to put too much. So I'm going to you have this like second horizon line in the water that's more blue where I think where the sky is reflecting in the water and yeah. So <clears throat> we're gonna suggest that here. And again, we're going to try to, for the moment, keep our 
colors light and we are going to work our way darker. I'm going to go back to our um, cerulean that's mixed with the green because you have this down here, right? Watercolor is really all about controlling the water and the paint is going to go where you put the water. It's not going to easily go onto this dry paper. It's going to try to follow the easier road and go where the water is. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for a minute because that's going to be our base. These are all of our base layers, right? So now we're going to go up to our sky and again with some of the cerulean blue. This is this is dry up here now. And I'm basically going to do something similar to what I did already, but we're going to add some of this cerulean blue because the sky in the um, inspiration photo is very much the same color as the water here, or at least very similar. So we're going to put a light wash of this um, other blue, this more turquoisey blue. into the sky and this is this is how I did the big painting generally when I do videos like this I split it up into two or three videos for you guys we're going to just leave it all in one and I am going to pause during certain parts so that you all can um, just stop there or keep going. You can work on your painting. You can pause. So remember, you're not trying to duplicate the photo. We're just giving a suggestion of, right? And if all of my skies look a little bit stormy, uh, for some reason I like a stormy sky and I actually love to um, um, see, you know, a stormy ocean. I don't like to be on a ship when it's storming. <laughs> I do get seasick, but I love the way it looks. Now I'm keeping a little space, or trying to, between the ocean and what I'm putting in the sky. I don't want the two to blend too much into each other. All right. So work on that and try to get your painting to look like that. You can pause here. And work on your sky and your ocean. Get the space layer down. You probably want to let them dry a little bit before we move forward. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so now if you've done that and you've let it dry, or if it's kind of dry but not completely dry, um, we're going to let our sky and ocean dry a little bit, and we're going to work on our huts. So now we are going to start adding cooler colors, shadow colors, to our huts to suggest more of their shapes. Um, I do need my scratch, a scratchy tool. Okay, you're going to need something with a sharp edge, and I do recommend that you put something in your kit. Um, this is an old insurance card. It could be an old gift card that you've just cut in half that has a kind of a pointy edge on it. It's not only great for laying on your piece and then painting to get a straight line, but scratching in the paint. I'm going to show you what I mean here. Um, <clears throat> So we're going to start out with, I think, um, purple. And um, I actually might need another plate. So I'm going to get a fresh plate because I don't want to get too much purple on that one. So we're going to mix purple. So if you remember from school, blue and red make purple, right? So whatever blue and red that you have you can make purple with. I'm going to take this other red that I have, which is called Matter Lake Deep, which is already, in my opinion, sort of on the blue side. Okay, and then some water. And then I'm going to put a little bit of blue in it. I'm going to use the ultramarine that we started with, and you get this purple. Okay, and it's pretty watery, so it's going to be pretty 
um, light and transparent, which is fine. I'm going to look at my photo and I'm going to look and see where all of these shadows are on the little huts. So underneath the roof line, there's actually a window here. And I'm going to actually let that sit for just a second. There's a little window here. This part's in shadow. There is a walkway between the huts that you can kind of see. While the paint is wet, I'm going to take my pointy edge and you see you get these lines in the paint that are very suggestive and interesting and that's kind of the point. Without doing too much. All right. I'm going to come back with just some water in areas where I want it to be more blended and less of a straight line. The pigment is going to settle in those um, scratch marks I just made on the paper. And I actually don't mind this bleeding I got into the sky. I didn't get that in the first one because I let things dry more, but I actually don't mind that. I kind of like the way it looks, so we're going to leave it. And that's, you know, what Bob Ross would call a happy accident. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put a little bit here. And I have these pencil lines here in the background. I don't mind those. For you, you might really mind them. And if you do, then you probably want to erase the ones that you think are in the wrong place before you get started. I don't, I don't really mind them. It doesn't bother me. Also going to add a little bit of this purple up underneath here. Take our pointy edge again. Now there are some piers that you can see. So again, use your straight edge and scratch some marks, make some suggestive marks. Whatever is above the water would be reflected in the water, so don't worry about things blending down into the water the way they are. All right, now we're going to take, I think we're going to go with a red. We're going to go with the Matter Lake Deep, one of your reds more of a true red. And I'm going to take the parts of the bright sunny bits that are have some interest to them. Maybe there's a little bit of a shadow. It's still bright, but the brightest color in my opinion that reflects sunlight and warmth is yellow. And then going towards the cooler scale, orange and red, some of, and then some of the greens. So we have our orange where the sun's really hitting it, I mean our yellow, and then uh, we're getting a little shadow and then more shadow. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. And again, I'm using just a little bit of paint and then water. If you get too much water in there, go back in really quick with your rag. And you can blot some or all of it up. It's going to depend on the paint and the pigment. Some of them stain the paper very quickly. And you can't really, you won't get too much of it lifted. Okay. So I like that, but I want to make now a darker purple with less water in it. So now we have a darker purple, you can see. It's not only more blue, there's less water there. using just the very tip of my paintbrush. This is really wet, so it's going to go 
in a lot of different directions. Not that that's a bad thing. I am okay with working with that, but I don't want to get too carried away. And I'm just, again, we're just using the tip of the brush. You don't want to push too hard. You don't need to dig any holes to China with your paintbrush. And you're just having fun. Have your cup of coffee near you or your cup of tea. Turn up some music, uh, maybe a glass of wine if it's in the evening, and um, just have some fun painting um, some of the scenes that you saw when you're out on your excursions. Or, you know, in one case when I was in Alaska, I painted... Um, the view of lighthouses and icebergs I got from my balcony, which was really fun. Okay. Now, I don't mind this purple bleeding into the sky, but now I'm getting too much. So I'm going to get in there with some water, and I'm going to lift some of that up. So now we're going to let that dry a little bit, work on your huts and start building your shadows. And um, next we're going to be working on the um, water. Now you could keep going the way we're going with the water and working with the drips and the puddles and the patterns that you get with the watercolor, which is how I did this one. And you get something really pretty and interesting. Or you can do it the way we're going to do it. And for that, you're going to need a little piece of plastic wrap. Um, you, if you don't have, I have some in my kit. I always carry it with me. But if you don't have some, I bet if you asked the waiter at the restaurant on the ship or at the hotel, if they had a little piece of plastic wrap, you probably could get one. Um, <laughs> you, uh, but like I said, if you don't have any, you can do it without. But I'm going to show you how to do it with, and um, we'll be right back. I'm going to go get some plastic wrap. Okay, yeah, wherever you are on your vacation, um, your restaurants, hotels, delis probably have plastic wrap around. Um, anything that's thin and plasticky, though, will work for this. So here's what we're going to do. We're gonna, I got my plastic wrap, and we're going to set that aside for a minute. I'm going to actually, I take that back, I'm going to actually cut a thin piece of it off. Where's my scissors? I kind of want it in two pieces, so... Alrighty. So first, we are going to do this. We're, this is wet right here. So first, I'm going to do this bit down here. So we're going to go back to our cerulean blue. This blue over here. We're going to put some more of it. Darken up that line that we had going on there. <coughs> bring it down. I like to leave space at the bottom so I like scenes like this because I like to do some journaling or writing about where I was and what I was doing at the bottom of my page. At the very least I write where I was, the name of the place, but you could write you know all kinds of things about where you were and what you were doing. Now I'm gonna make some more of that where I mix the cerulean with the green. Was too much green. <coughs> I'm going to put that down here. We're going to put some water in there. Now, for this technique, it's all about having a lot of water in there. If while you're doing that your cerulean dries up, you want to go back and add some more and get it wet. Okay. It's really, really, really wet, which is what you want. And you're going to take your plastic wrap and I'm going to put it down here and I'm going to scrunch it up and I'm going to let that paint dry like that. 
So you see all these marks that you're already getting? When the paint dries and you lift that up, those marks are going to stay and you're going to get something very reminiscent of this uh, pattern that you have in the inspiration photo. Okay, so while that's drying, we're going to go back and work on our huts. I, I want to do it a little bit on here too, but there's some, well, maybe I can. There's some purple there. Let's try it. Okay, so we're going to add some of this greeny color, the cerulean and the green up here. And then some water. I'm going to leave a little bit of a light space between the two um, sections because in the inspiration photo there's this line in the water that's really interesting. All right, we're going to take the other piece of plastic and kind of stretch it this way so the wrinkles are kind of horizontal. And we're going to just push it in to the wet water and leave it sit there. Yeah. That works. All right, we're gonna <clears throat> let that dry. Now, sometimes I do this and it's like the last thing I do or I'm halfway through the painting. I put the plastic wrap on there and I just let it dry. I go out for my excursions for the day and in the evening I come back and then I finish the painting. Um, if you can also get interesting um, effects if, especially if you're doing beach scenes, by doing things like dropping salt into the wet paint, it really granulates the paint and you get this interesting texture. And it's really interesting to do when you're like doing a beach scene and, you're, and to do it in the sand. All right, so we're gonna go back to our huts here. And I am going to use my ultramarine blue straight out of the pan with no extra water. I'm going to move my plastic wrap out of my way. And working again on the shadows. And putting a little bit of paint and then some water. So your cool shades that suggest shadow and coolness would be blues, greens, purple. Your ones that suggest sunlight and warmth would be um, red, orange, yellow. Now there, to get that line, I just barely touched my brush to the paper, barely, barely. And while I'm working on this, this is drying down here, so. That was a lot of paint and a lot of water. So you can go back in there with a damp brush and lift some of that, or you can get in there with your rag. Now to get a dark black, brown, grayish color, you can mix all of your colors together on your palette. All your primaries will make some sort of neutral. Um, I happen to have a color that's always in my palette and I don't know that you're gonna have it in class, but it's called Payne's Gray. It's a dark um, bluish gray color. It's not quite black. Um, you don't always have this in your palette, but that is why I carry a black water soluble pen or pencil with me generally. Um, but you'll see if you do have this color 
um, why this would make your painting pop. I'm going to add some of this here to our huts, just a little bit. All right, so we're going to let all of that dry. It's really wet. Play with your houses. If you have a dark color like Payne's Gray or Black, you can definitely add it and use it to aid in your shadows on your little huts. Let the plastic wrap dry. And once that's dry, we're going to come back and we're going to finish our painting and we'll be right back. Okay, so you definitely could do this part in the morning and you could, you know, set the plastic wrap in there. Um, go have some more coffee and breakfast with the family. Come back, peel it off. It's it's kind of dry. I have I mentioned I'm, I have no patience for anything because I don't. Um, and peel this off, and you get this interesting texture. The longer you let it dry, the more of the textury bit that you get. We got more of it down here than up here because the color is darker, and it's very reminiscent of what we have up here. It is slightly damp still because I'm no I have no patience, and I'm so I'm going to do this. Just get up some of that wet. There we go. So the other thing you can do is you can dip, dip, um, get the paint wet, and you could dip a, ra a dry rag in it, a dry napkin, scrunch it up and dip it in, and you're going to get, I accidentally stuck my arm actually in this one, and you'll get something like this kind of a pattern, a wrinkly pattern, and um, that just suggests this interesting pattern that we have in the original photo. We're not trying to duplicate it exactly, we're just trying to get the feeling of, inspiration of, right? Uh, my huts are still kind of slightly damp. I'm going to take some water here and I'm going to make some of these things that are going down into the water less obvious. I'm not trying to take them away, I just don't want them to be quite so obvious. Um, <clears throat> we're going to take some of our cerulean blue and go in here. And add a little more. Firm up that line a little bit. We're going to take some of that blue green color and add a bit more of that. We're going to add some of it up here. And I'm putting the water where I want the paint to go. I don't want the paint to go that way. I want it to go down. So that's where I'm putting the, wa the water. <clears throat> if you just remember that with watercolor paint, you'll be golden. Okay. That's pretty good. I actually like that. I think I might like that better than the first time I did it. Alrighty. That's pretty cool. You could leave it at that. I'd be totally happy with that. I'm not going to. <laughs> so I have another yellow here. Um called lemon yellow. The azo yellow is like a you can tell especially by looking at the dried cake it's a little bit more orangey than this one. So I'm gonna take this lemon yellow. This one's also more opaque than the other one. And I'm going to just add a little bit more of it to some places where we kind of lost a little bit of <coughs> our brightness in our little huts. You could, um, I'm a mixed media artist at heart, so you definitely could do this by um, using a gel pen or something that you ha else that you have in your kit, depending on what's actually in your kit. I carry um, highlighter crayons, so sometimes I use those after the watercolor paint is dry. Let's 
a little too much water. Okay. And let's see. Look there this way on the walkway to suggest the walkway and railings. Okay. I'm also going to take some of our um, shadow colors here and we have a inconsistency with the roof line over there. And we're going to fix it really quick. My lines are tad off. <laughs> that happens. I'm going to take my pointy scratchy tool and I'm using just the colors uh, some of the colors I have on my palette to just help me add another layer of brightness or shadow to certain shapes to refine them and make them more and or make them more interesting to have them help me suggest the shapes that I want although I'm pretty happy with the way this painting is turning out The orange is still a cool, I mean a warm color that suggests sunlight, but it's cooler than the yellow, remember. It, in my opinion, again, these are all my opinions. You may have other art teachers in your life that, or yourself that you disagree with me. I take no um, I'm not offended by that. I lost my train of thought there, could you tell? <laughs> Alright. Because I'm painting. That's usually the sign of that I'm having a lot of fun is I lose track of what I'm doing because I'm painting. <laughs> now as the orange yellow and this purple color blend, if they do where I'm putting it now, it's going to make a dark neutral color. So that's definitely a way that you can make a dark neutral color to darken up your shadows if you don't have like a Payne's gray or a black in your palette. Mix especially purple and orange together and you'll get a dark neutral color that'll work for you. And your shapes don't have to be perfect. It's not about perfection. It's about expressing um, the feeling of the place that you've gone to visit, that you're on vacation. Yep, that's pretty cute. I like it. So I'm going to dry this really quick with a heat tool, which is not something you're going to be able to do in class um, or on vacation. I don't carry one of these on vacation. I would, I would, if I was on vacation, just let it dry. But we're going to actually dry it with a heat embossing tool. Don't hold it too close and, you know, turn it in circles over your work if you're at home doing this. All right, I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, there we have it. Um, sometimes with some paper as it dries, it'll curl. Don't let that freak you out. Um, that's normal. Um, I'm gonna take a black pen. Now, the two black pens I always carry with me um, are a Pilot Sharpie pen, a fine point. You can. This is their stainless steel ones. They have lots of different version as, uh, versions of the Sharpie fine point pen, but you want the fine point that has a little tiny tip on it. Um, and this one is permanent. It's waterproof. So if you do any marks with this, you can go over it with more paint. It's not going to go anywhere. Uh, this is a Pilot Varsity disposable fountain pen. This is not waterproof. Um, but if you have this and a palette of colors that don't include black, you can put some of this on there and then add water to it and use this as your black color. And this is a dark black blue. It reminds me very much of Payne's gray paint. Um, so, and I'm actually going to use this one. I'm not going to add more water to it, but I'm going to use this one just because I like this pen. Um, but I'm going to, like I did with the bigger one, I'm going to just add some sketchy lines. And I would also, generally speaking, um, add, um, 
I would do the journaling with this one or write the place, the name of the place that I had visited. And it's not about straight lines. It's about just suggestive sketchy lines. So get that whole straight line thing out of your brain. Right? Just something like that. That's all I would do. It makes a cute, interesting little painting. And you definitely have plenty of space down here to write the name of the location that you were on vacation, um, to journal about it and about the time that you had with your family. You even could go so far as to put a little picture of um, you and your partner or whoever you were with on vacation down here at the bottom. There's enough room to do that and to paste that in. So I hope that gives you some ideas of one version of this that you can do. I am going to do another one. I'm going to clean up a little bit and we'll be right back. For those of you who want to stop and try this, this is a good pausing or stopping point. And um, I hope you have a lot of fun with it. If you have any questions about this, um, please email me. My email is in the description below along with my website address. Um, and I'm very approachable and you can even go and find me on Facebook and friend me over there. I'll try to remember to put the links to all of that in the description below. You can also leave a comment here on the video and I'll answer it. I do reply to the comments once a day. So, all right, I'm going to set up for the next shot and we'll be right back. Okay, for this next one, we're actually going to work with this shot. Now, at first I saw this and I went, hmm. <laughs> and I, when I was trying to print out these inspiration photos, I was trying to fiddle with what size to print them at and I accidentally printed these on index cards but I think it was a happy accident so I have an idea for this one. So the first thing you want to do if you have a shot like this that you want to paint from is you're going to need the for most of you who aren't comfortable with their drawing skills, this is what I recommend, that you find a little image of the ship that you're on. If, if, the, if you ha are on a cruise, like one of the po Paul Gauguin cruises, that you find an image of the ship. Now, you know, they're gonna, it's gonna be in one of the brochures, probably at the concierge desk. You could get a postcard or a sticker from the gift shop. Um, maybe before you've left for the cruise, um, you've gotten some information from direct travel and there's a picture of the ship in it. Um, you might wanna save a few of those uh, images of the ship and just um, cut them out and put them in your travel kit before you leave um, because I'm gonna recommend that you do that and we're gonna use that. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna just fussy cut out. That's what this is called, fussy cut out this little ship. And I think for most of, most of you who are looking at this and going, okay, I can't draw a stick figure. Um, this is going to be not only the painting for you to do, to work on, to try and have fun with, um, but doing it this way and not being intimidated by the ship um, and having to um, draw the ship is going to be the way to go. I just cut this little ball thing off that was at the top of the ship. I don't know what that is, but we'll add it back in with a gel pen. <laughs> I'm doing this without my reading glasses on. That's probably a bad idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just roughly cut it out. It should be sized um, to a good size for your page. Um, so depending on what kind of size of page you're working on, if you're just bringing a small journal with you on vacation, then you probably don't want a ship that's any bigger than this one. And this one is how big? It's um, like an eighth of an inch shy of three inches. Okay. Um, it's about about two and three quarters inches would be probably about what we want. Now, all those and although this picture is vertical, I'm going to do it horizontal. It's your painting; you can do what you want. Remember that. Okay. So we're going to put our ship aside out somewhere out of the way where hopefully it's not going to get wet. And first, we're going to work on the background. This is a really pretty image. I love the. Um, image of this island surrounded by the sandbar and then the ocean. It's just gorgeous. So we're going to start with a cerulean blue and it's mixed over here a little bit with our yellow, but I think that's going to be okay for what we're working with. 
and we're going to just put a light wash. No pencil this time. So I'm just looking at the picture and kind of where that sandbar is, putting in some of this color, this blue green color, and then some water. Remember what I said, we're going to um, work with our watercolors and work lighter and work our way darker, right? And the paint is going to go where the water is, so if you don't want it to go somewhere, don't put water there. Okay. All right. Now we're going to come in with, um, I'm going to take a little bit of our Azo Yellow and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of one of the um, neutral shades in here. This is Yellow Ochre. Just kind of make a sandy yellow color. And we're going to put that in here. And remember, too, what I said before we are trying to give the impression of the photo, we're not trying to copy it exactly. We're giving the impression of the photo of our vacation, how much fun we had on the cruise, or wherever it is that you went. All right. Now we have a bunch of, we have two really interesting greens here. So I'm going to take this one, this is sap green, which is a yellowy green already, and I'm going to just mix it into that color we mixed with the yellow ochre and the yellow. Now this foliage on the on the island is definitely something where you could take and put these greens on here and then sprinkle salt in it and let it dry. Go out for the day, go on some excursions. When you come back, brush the salt off into a garbage can and you're gonna have an interesting gran granulated texture into your foliage that you might really like. I don't think we're gonna do that here, but you could do that and it would be really interesting. And I wanna encourage you all to experiment with that. When I am on vacation, if we go out somewhere like to a deli or something like that and they have little salt packets, I usually do put some, take an extra one and put it in my bag. Okay. I'm going to let all of that dry a little bit and we're going to come in with some of the cerulean uh, mixed with that little bit of the ultramarine here that's on our palette. Just so we can use that up. I'm going to put some water in there. Add that up here. We're working on being inspired by our photo and not copying it exactly, right? Because we're doing something fun and creative, inspired by our vacation, whether you're doing it while you're on vacation or you're doing it when you get home. Either way, I like to do some of these while I'm on vacation and then if I really like the piece or the scenery and the way it turned out, then I'll do it bigger on bigger paper and take more time with it when I get home. Taking the same color and putting it down here. And some water. This is very, they're very abstract shapes, right? You just want to suggest the shapes in the photo. We're not looking to copy them exactly. In this, in this one, more than the other one, there's literally, there's no drawing skills required for this one. Not that there's a whole lot for the other one either. I have confidence in you guys. I know you can do it. I do want things to be a bit blendy, so I'm going to put some water where I think the lines are not blendy enough. Okay. I'm going to put some of this blue color up here. And remember, we're starting out light, working our way darker, right? So now I'm going to take more ultramarine blue and mix it in here. 
make it bluer, less green. And we're working wet on wet. We're putting this in while this is very wet so that things are bleeding and blooming and blending together. We're okay with that. just very quickly making marks and adding color. So now we're going to take and we're going to take some of the same sap green, I think, and we're going to mix it with the blue that's on the palette. We'll get a little bit darker green. And I'm, I'm just tapping the brush. And again, um, something I didn't mention, I'm using the same brush I did in the other painting, the round one, the Royal Watercolor Brush round number 16. It's a kind of a medium-sized um, round watercolor brush. And I'm just tapping in this slightly darker green color. Using up the green that's on my palette. Okay. Now, I think we're gonna take the blue from the other painting. I'm gonna mix some of this darker Viridian green into it. Yeah, that's a good color. I always mix on something white so that I can see what the color is going to look like or get some kind of an idea what the color is going to look like on white paper. So I'm looking at where the darker spots of green are on the island, where the shadows are, and then adding dots of this paint there. I'm going to take a little bit of one of my browns. I have a burnt sienna here. I'm actually going to mix it with a green. And you get this sort of dirty brown green color. I'm going to put some of that in. Again, we're just I'm just tapping. I'm trying to tap and not drag. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap with just the tip of my brush. This is all very wet. So you don't need too much color. It's going to just go everywhere. If you get too much, you can get your brush damp with clean water and then just do that and you can drag it and tap it and lift up some of that color. You can also get interesting marks into your painting. looking pretty good. Now this is just really easy. There's no, I mean you could leave it at that and that is a really pretty interesting painting and then you could put your ship on and journal about your cruise. I think we're going to take it a little bit further but I want to dry it. I'm going to show it on camera this time. So again normally I would say to you do this 
go have lunch and enjoy your day. Come back and finish it when you get back. Um, I'm Because we're filming uh, and I'm at home, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use my heat embossing tool. Don't hold it too close to the paper. And I'm lifting my paper up and, and I'm just making sure what I'm doing is taking the shine off the paper, the water off the paper, and that's all I want to do. So I just want to dry up all the, loot, the extra water. Now we can go back with our brush and I can take some more of that green, the Viridian green. And by itself, I think it's too bright for this painting but I'm going to mix it with other colors I have on my palette to sort of dull down the brightness a little bit like I did with the brown. I have the paints gray, um, which so I'm going to use that. You could probably put some orange in it and it would do the same thing. You can practice with some colors. Have If you're not sure about your colors, have a little scrap piece of paper um, handy next to you that you can you know mix up a couple colors and then you can just try it. So I'm going to tap this other green in here. And again, we're tapping. I'm doing, I'm trying to do more tapping than I am dragging. And leaving interesting marks, marks that suggest the foliage and the landscape of the island. I love the transparent nature of watercolor and the fact that you can layer a bunch of these colors and marks on top of each other and see all the previous ones in um, underneath that layer, new layer of paint. Okay. Take some of them with some plain water and blend them out a little bit, but not all of them. So I want to leave some of them. I think some of the marks are interesting. Okay. <clears throat> let's go back to our sand and let's take our plate. I'm going to switch to a <clears throat> cleaner corner. I'm going to take this is the yellow ochre. I'm going to take a little bit of that. Uh, just the very tip of our brush here. I'm going to rinse it off and get it damp and I'm going to blot it on my rag and I'm going to go underneath where I just dabbed in those lines of yellow ochre and put some water where I want the paint to go. I want this line on the island to be fairly straight and I want it to blend out and be reflected in the water. Quick, easy. This is this is easier than the first one. I love that. Okay, so now we're gonna take our little ship. What did I do with my ship? There it is. And again, easy, easy, easy. So one thing that's always in my kit is a glue stick. You don't have to use anything fancy. Elmer's will work. In fact, let's just use Elmer's. This is Elmer's Extreme. There we go. <clears throat> should do this on a scratch piece of paper. I would recommend doing this on a scratch piece of paper or something so you don't get glue everywhere. Just glue the back of your image, your ship in this case. Position it in your painting. Now remember I cut off the, I think, satellite ball by accident, which is right about here. So we're going to take the white gel pen We'll stick it back in there. <laughs> Suggest it. <clears throat> and to pull the image into your painting, I'm going to take some of um, one of our watercolors. Let's see. Let's try for this blue that's over here.
Okay. Something like that. I'll try that a little bit again. In the original photo, there's like waves or something coming off the back end of the ship, so I'm going to suggest some lines. Yeah. And there's plenty of room on there to do um, some journaling and write about where you're at in the world and on your vacation. So there you go. I hope that gave you some interesting ideas of what you can do on your vacation and do something creative with your art. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Put something in the comments below or email me. Uh, the link to Direct Travel's Facebook page, um, if you would choose to book a travel trip with them um, and on Paul Gauguin Cruises or any other vacation, um, is in the description below. You can um, go over to their Facebook page and they will be happy to help you out. Uh, really great company, great group of people, and I'm not just saying that. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I am on YouTube. I do regular art tutorials here if you would like to follow me. And um, the most important thing, of course, is go out and have a great day. Have a great vacation. Do some art. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.
Oh, 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 oh,